What's up guys? Welcome back to the build series. This is episode number, I'm sure you've heard me say it enough times by now, so I'm not even gonna bother. It's up in the title, you know what episode it is. Let's get back to the build. So at the end of the last video, I was welding in the driver's side wheel tub until I rented a wire in my MIG welder. That's all top back up. So let's get back to these wheel tubs. I wanna get going on the passenger side tub here. I was telling you guys a little bit in the last video about how I was gonna have to do something tricky with the sheet metal back here in order to cover the factory uh, fuel filler neck. Now, I've really been thinking about it, trying to figure out how I'm gonna make it all work, and my brain has wandered off in a completely different direction because I'm not even gonna bother with the factory fuel filler anymore. Not only am I gonna not put that back in the car, but I'm gonna rip out the factory gas tank while I'm at it and put in a fuel cell. But more on that later. Let's get back to the wheel tubs. So, first thing I need to do is make the wheel tub for the passenger side and get that all welded into place. Now, if I was smart, before I welded in the tub on the driver's side here, I should have made a template and copied that onto the new tub for the passenger side. But of course I didn't. So I'm gonna get the wheel tub cut for the passenger side, get it all welded into place, and then I'll come back and show you guys what the next step is. Let's get going. All right, so got the passenger wheel tub all welded in, and I'm really glad that I'm not dealing with the fuel filler neck anymore because it would have been a lot of work, you know, to make the cover for the top here. I would have had to actually even cut into the new wheel tub as well. So I'm really glad that I just scrapped that whole idea and I'm gonna go with the fuel cell setup. So going back to the tubs, the next thing I need to do is make these side covers here to box the tubs in and fully finish them off. So I'll show you over here how I'm gonna make the template to cut the new sheet metal. All right, so. Hopefully you kids eat your cornflakes every morning like I do. This is what I'm gonna to use to design my templates for the new sheet metal to box in the wheel tub. So basically, you know, you can use any cereal box, pizza box, any type of thin cardboard works really good. So I'm gonna cut this apart and design a template to trace on a sheet metal. template all cut out. Now I can trace it onto my brand new piece of sheet metal here. And I'm going to be using uh, 20 gauge sheet metal to complete the wheel tubs. Now another trick you can do too, because the sheet metal has actually been cut in a break, um, you know, since this is basically straight corners, rather than cut it all out, just line this up right to the bottom edge and we're just going to trace the radius of the template here. All right, so as you can see, I've got the piece traced out. So I'm gonna basically just cut along this line, maybe just a little bit past. So if I can have to trim anything with a flap disc, I can do that. Got my template all made here. It's all uh, sized up, now I'm going to start welding it into place.
All right, so got the side panels all welded on on both sides starting to come together You know wheel tubs look uh, look pretty decent pretty symmetrical to each other So now the last thing I need to do is make the piece for here to completely box in the passenger side and again, that's just basically Creating the symmetrical look between the two tubs whereas the factory wheel tubs uh, The passenger side was a bit bigger due to the factory fuel filler, which I'm deleting So I've already gone ahead and cut out the template for this side so to give you an idea, you know, this will basically just go in here and I'll weld that all up. So let's go and uh, cut some more sheet metal. So trying to keep sheet metal waste to a minimum, I'm going to kind of cheat here and follow this line against the original line when I cut out these side pieces for the wheel tubs. You know, so I can just line this up somewhere as close as I can get it and then again just use the flap disc to trim down the last little bit once it's all uh, traced and cut out. There's a piece. piece all trimmed down to size. This is about as close as I'm going to get it. And as you can see, we'll just pop this here into place and it fits pretty good, pretty tight. So all that's left now is to weld it in. Finally, the rear wheel tubs are finished. So I think they turned out pretty good for what they are. And again, a lot more symmetrical looking than the factory wheel tubs. Now, I think I said it in the last episode, or maybe it was the one before that, but there was absolutely no reason for me to do this to the back end of the car, other than the factor of just continuing the theme of all the work that I did in the front and bringing that to the back end of the car and just looking cool. You know, even though I am replicating a WRC car to an extent, you know, this wasn't really necessary in the back. I just thought with all the work going on, I might as well do it. So, you know, you would see this on a WRC car or a rally car. Since those cars are hitting big jumps all the time, they need all the suspension travel and wheel clearance uh, in order to hit those jumps. And as much as I would love to hit a huge jump with my car, that's probably the only thing you're not going to see me do. But the next thing I need to do is I still need to work on the rear strut tower plates. Now, I haven't got those pieces laser cut yet, but I'll show you over here what's going on with those. So these are the technical drawings for the rear strut tower plates that I designed and I'm waiting to get laser cut. So I started off by making a template out of a cereal box, of course. Transfer that into the computer. This is the drawing I came up with. So as soon as I get these back from the laser cutter, this is the base plate here. This will get welded around the entire perimeter of the rear strut tower. And then this piece here, which is very similar to what's going on in the front of the car, just a little bit smaller in size, will get welded on top and that'll complete the rear strut towers. All right guys, thanks again for watching. I hope you're all liking the build series and everything that I've been doing with the car. If you guys have any questions or wanna leave your thoughts on what you think of the build series, drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the entire build. I promise I'm gonna release some more videos a lot more frequently, so you're just gonna have to stay tuned and wait and see. But until then, I will see you guys in the next episode.